In this diagram, we're going to find the values of F1 and F2. If I go this way three units and I go this way three units, I'm going to have this point to draw this vector. This at the same time, I'm going to move in this direction and in this direction at a point to draw this vector. This is the Cartesian plane. If I move from zero towards this point, this is three units. If I move up on the y axis, four points, this and this will coincide here. And I will draw a line to this zero point. That is, if I have a Cartesian plane, if I move one, two, three, and I move one, two, three, four. This is the zero reference point. This four moves horizontally. This three moves vertically. The vertical three and the horizontal four will meet at this point. I will now draw a line. This is the vector. To represent this vector, I will write three, four in column. This is plus and this is plus. This is a column vector. The first step is, this is a diagram, isn't it? Here we have F1 in Newton, and superimposed on this, we have F2 in Newton. The Newton is simply the unit of force. Here we have what? 8 Newton. There is an angle here, there is an angle here. Isn't it? This is plus y axis and this is minus y axis. This is minus x axis. This is plus x axis. This is 45 degree angle and this is 65 degree angle. Now, this is the object that all these forces are acting on. This object is in the zero reference point. Step number one, summation of all the forces acting on the x axis is equal to zero at equilibrium. Summation of all the forces acting on the x axis is, let's resolve this on the x axis. This arrow will be pointing towards the positive x axis, which makes it eight. And because this angle have contact with the x axis is going to be what? 8 multiplied by what? Cosine of the angle under consideration. Next, we we'll consider F1 on the x axis. If F1 closes this angle to be resolved on the x axis, this arrow is pointing towards the minus x axis. We're going to have F1, which is the force, Multiply by what? Cosine of the angle under consideration. Is there any other force we need to consider? No. This is standing on the y axis. I will not consider it. At equilibrium, this is zero. So I will have 8 cos 65 minus F1 cos 45 is equal zero at equilibrium. This will remain eight cos 65. This will move across the equal sign to become a positive value, F1 cos 45. Next, I will keep F1 here, right? F1 will remain here, isn't it? On this side. Here we have 8 cos 65. 8 cos 65. This cos 45 will move across. Because it's multiplying on the other side, it will what? It will divide. Good. And we're going to have here as cos 45. What is the value of F1? 4.78 Newton. 
we have obtained the value of F1 using step 1, resolving all the forces on the x axis. Next, step 2. Step 2. Summation of all the forces acting on the y axis is 0 at equilibrium. Summation of all the forces on the y axis is this is on the y axis f2 and is pointing towards the what negative direction of y so it's going to be minus f2 i will have minus f2 next this will be resolved on the vertical y axis and what will it be who will tell me 65 good plus 8 sine 65 next we we'll consider f1 if we resolve f1 here what do we have good plus f1 multiplied by sine 45 at equilibrium this is zero i will have zero is here is minus f2 plus can you give me the value of this to four decimal places 8 multiplied by sine 65 to four decimal places i need it to four decimal places because this is not our final answer i don't want to truncate a lot of values here plus we have a value for f1 so it will be 4.78 multiply by sine 45 so instead of f1 i will write 4.78 times sine 45 now i will have 0 is minus f2 plus 7.2504 plus give me this value place to four decimal places 3.3799 This F2 is what? Negative. On the other side, it will be positive. You're going to add this to this. You got 10.63 what? So, I'll round it off to 3. Newton. This is the value for your F1 and this is the value for your F2, you are done. I hope that was simple. Maybe where you missed it was at equilibrium. This is zero. Say again. Yes, often for an object to be at equilibrium, all the forces acting on that object must be equal to zero. If it is not equal to zero, what do you think will happen? If there wasn't a balance on all the forces on the x axis and the y axis on an object, what do you think will happen to the object or to a building? This can lead to building collapse, isn't it? We are in this building now because all the forces acting on this building is equal to zero. That's why this structure is standing. If you compromise the integrity of the equilibrium, the structure will collapse. This is what structural engineers do to ensure that from the foundation to the roof, the entire structure is stable and all the forces acting on this object is equal to zero. This object here can be a building. This object here can be probably a mechanical device. This object here can be any object or equipment 